up y'all welcome to my channel you couldn't already tell this is my first youtube video like full length youtube video today i wanted to do a q a a classic start to any youtube channel i got a couple of questions first what do you feel sets your brand apart from other upcoming brands in the town in my area i have like a couple of people like that are doing um brands as well and they're doing some cool stuff but I'm the only one that's really doing like reworked vintage. I would say that's like the biggest thing. Like, you know, we're all doing our thing though. A lot of them, you know, a lot of them doing more so like streetwear, you know what I mean? Which is dope. I think I'm the only one that's really doing like reworked vintage. As of right now, like I'm pretty much just like doing everything myself. I don't have no manufacturers and nothing like that. Nobody else is doing that. Number two. What inspired me to start Color Theory? So I guess what inspired me to start was like, I was always just like creative and like growing up, I, I would draw and things like that. And I just, I got to an age where I wanted to just like have a plan for my life. Like what did I want to do after high school and things like that? Not after college, after high school, you feel me? You know, I was thinking about getting into like, which is funny enough, I was younger, I was thinking of doing YouTube but like for like Madden though, I was going to do, cause I was really into Madden at one point and I was going to do that. But now I'm doing uh, fashion content to promote for like my business and things like that. And to create an engagement, I just started messing around with clothes. Got better with it. I started having fun with it. Like I started having friends and family. Like they started, you know, oh, Teo, you want to do this? Oh, can you do that? And I just doing it you know and just over that like you start learning more things and then eventually like i created a instagram to like make it more so like wide known like this is what i'm doing like hit me up if you want some custom or want some rework message done whatever whatever and that's pretty much how it started for the most part oh and then and then i eventually had started i started sewing which took me to a whole different level, got me into a different market. Cause before I was really just doing like tie dyeing and distressing, which is cool. But the sewing market, like you can, you know what I mean? There's so much you could do. Like I've had people hit me up like, Hey, can you do a prom dress for me or whatever, whatever. I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't know how to sew and not if I had just stayed to like dying and things like that. So definitely glad, but that is what inspired me to start it. What is the best part about being a fashion designer? So the best part about being a fashion designer is just being able to tell your own story and create clothes the way you want them to be. Like, if you like something, if you like a piece, right, but there's something you don't like about it or something you think would be better, as a fashion designer, you can do that. You can you can bridge that gap. Just filling that void in, in fashion that you think nobody's really satisfying or if they are they're not doing it to a certain level that you visualize it i definitely think the best part is just creating and filling a space that you feel like is vacant unoccupied next question what is the hardest part about being a fashion designer so for me i don't know about for other people but i i already like put myself in like a box per se, because it's not really a box, but me doing primarily like sustainable and rework vintage cuts out a lot of things that would be readily accessible, readily easy for other people, other brands to get into that are not of the rework vintage sustainable, um, that, that are not into that. For So for these tees, I had to find, you know, blanks to do it on. Then I had to like crop it myself, get the t tags done, all this other stuff, find somebody to screen print, which um, if you were to just have like a normal brand, right, that wasn't reworked vintage, you could have just went directly to a manufacturer and they would have handled all of that for you. So for me, it was just more time into it, but it allowed me to learn a lot and I just learned more about the production process. And certain things that you don't even think about would go into uh, some, something as simple as a t-shirt. There's a lot of like processes and things that go into it. But the hardest part, like it would be 
just trying to tell my story through a certain lens, essentially. Like, since I want to do it, like, by rework vintage, it's, like, kind of limits you. It sets you apart at the same time. So it's kind of like I'm taking this weakness and making it into a strength, essentially. Also, another thing that's hard or the hardest part about it is just, like, um, it's not something you want to think like it's not a a way a mindset you want to get into like too often but like you kind of gotta like try to anticipate what what people are going to like which you could think about it two ways it's like you could think like yo i'm gonna just drop this stuff and whoever likes it likes it whoever doesn't like it don't like it whatever right and that's very liberating right and it can it allows you to create freely but on the other end of it you're not like the whole point of a business a clothing brand is to make sales and to ultimately make money so with that first the aforementioned mindset you put yourself at risk but on the other hand you don't want to stress about what people are going to like too much because there's no there's a way to but it can be difficult to anticipate what's going to be what's going to sell and what people are going to like or what the masses will uh enjoy but on to the next one who slash what are your biggest inspirations so for me um i like to look to a lot of uh like reworked vintage brands that are doing it at like a high level like doing what i'm doing but they're doing it at like the highest level so for one that comes to mind it would definitely be better with age and um i believe they're based out of like la and they're doing rework vintage and things like that and they you know they do it they do they'll do like um a collection of tees and they'll have their screen print on it and it'll be on like vintage blanks They'll have like cool messaging, things like that. They're getting their pieces on like celebrities, things like that. They they have their stuff in uh, Dover Street Market, which is like one of the biggest, I guess like fashion retailer spaces to be in. Like that's like, you're up there with like, you know, Supreme has spot in there, um, Gucci, Denim Tears, all these, you know, all these well-known brands, things like that, like ranging from luxury to streetwear are in, you know, Dover Street Market that's very inspiring to me and that shows me that there is a future with reworked vintage although it's being quote unquote limited there's definitely uh, a way to go about it and there's a definitely um success in this if done tastefully if done right if done correctly and with like a plan in mind let me think of another one uh, another one of mine would be uh, Tremaine Emery I'm a big fan of like denim tears things like that I just like the messaging. I'm really into uh, like African American history. Just uh, having a social awareness is so important to me, and I would like my my brand to carry the same kind of like social awareness um, as well. So that's definitely inspiring. I mean, you have like a whole bunch of things. Like you got like Vir Virgil Abloh. I'm I'm just inspired by any creative that's really doing it at the highest level. I watch. I watch a whole bunch of videos about being creative and other, the, you know, other creatives and how they came to their success and their stories. Like, it's always um, a great experience just like hearing that. What made you want to start this business? Um, I guess that I, I was already um, answered, you know, just like me wanting to be creative, me wanting to express my art, like artistic side and take monetize my creativity essentially my last question what's the first custom piece you made hold on i got you so fun fact i actually keep like a, a archive in my closet a color theory archive of all like some old pieces uh some of the first pieces i made and for me i like to keep that around just to as like a show you where I came from or show remind me of where I came from and just how far I've come um and just refining my uh vision and just becoming like you know more more talented and improving my skill so right here I have my first um ever thing that I've ever made 
really. And um, so I took a pair of American Eagle, old American Eagle pants, and they the rips were like really big on them. And I used to like them, but the rips got too big and my, too much of my leg was showing. And that wasn't really the type of look I was going for. So I, I eventually stopped wearing them. And then a couple months later, I had just got the urge to cre like create and I got the idea like, yo, what if I put up tie dye t-shirts and put it in the rips to cover the hole and then also like provide like a cool effect to it. And to me, like, you know, that was, you know, I wanted to try it out. I made this with fabric glue because I didn't know how to sew yet. And um, it turned out cool. And then I, I received a like, like good reception from it. Like a lot of people was like, oh, that's dope. Like. You know, like, oh, those are cool, yo. Like, where you get those from? Or how you do that? Whatever, whatever. So, you know, that was kind of like my first experience with that. Like your first piece, like, I think this is pretty, pretty good. So I really uh, started all of this when I was like 15 years old. And, you know, just playing around with scrap fabrics, things like that. Um, I guess that kind of like make uh, something out of nothing, trans, you know, ended up inspiring me to get into like rework vintage. I guess, I don't know. It's just, I, you know, I just care about the planet and I want to be as sustainable as possible. This was fun. I definitely look forward to doing more of these. So make sure y'all tune in and comment down below some ideas you would like to see, some videos you want to see. Um, if you want to come thrifting with me, I do like short videos, like TikToks, things like that. Oh, actually, Follow my other social medias as well. I'm going to try to link that in the description. I'm going to find out how to do that. But, yeah. Um, and I, I think that would make a good video. Like a thrifting with me. Like a whole full length video would be cool. So, yeah. Y'all definitely let me know what y'all want. I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. Peace. If you made it to the end of the vid, um, comment down below. Um, enlightenment question of the day let's do a little question I, I see like some youtubers do this so i'm like let me try it out i don't know make it more interactive um what's the question of the day um do y'all like mango how do y'all feel about mango question of the day me personally mango is probably my like top it's like watermelon and mango are my two favorite fruits so that's how I feel about it. But yeah, catch you on the next one. Peace out. Thanks for staying.